Hello friends, welcome. If you're new here, my name is August. Thank you all so much for being here. This is the start of another weekly reading vlog. I am still sick. I'm actually going on day six of this sickness. I felt like I was starting to get better and then this morning I have just taken, I've taken a turn. Oh my gosh, it's not even morning anymore. It is 2 p.m. on Saturday. So as an update, I did test positive for COVID. It was an at-home test. Both my partner and I tested positive. He's asymptomatic. And I can officially say that um, this is the weirdest sickness I've ever had. I, I really can't express how much my brain feels affected. Everything feels very slow in my brain. The brain fog is very real. It's been really weird. I will just say that. It's just been very bizarre. It's been a very bizarre experience. So far I can still taste and smell, so I'm really knocking on wood that that doesn't change. It just sucks, you know? Yeah, going almost three years into a pandemic without yet having said disease. Please be safe, everyone. Because of my sickness, I have had to cancel all of my plans, and my only goal <laughs> is for me to feel better and to like take care of my body and my mind. Waking up every morning and having literally no purpose is hard for me, like not having something to work on or a job to do or a goal to meet. And I feel like now that I'm on day six, I'm actually just feeling like I'm ready to really rest and enjoy the time that I have, which sounds awful because I am sick, but there's also a way of like just for me to stop fighting the urge to work or the urge to create or the urge to like do something with my quote unquote downtime but it really is like my body is trying so hard to recover so this reading vlog is going to be the covid diaries basically of me just actually trying to focus on reading and being cozy and comfortable and just trying so hard to slow the frick down because even when i've been sick like i am laying in bed but at the same time i have been working on my laptop i have been trying to find some way to be productive and motivated and it's very hard <laughs> right now with the brain fog and the way my body feels so long intro done um let's talk about the books I'm currently reading because I am in the middle of like three different books right now and I just started an audiobook this morning. I am still reading Bride's Head Revisited by Evelyn Waugh? War? Waugh. Waugh. I think that's how you all told me in the comments of that video how to pronounce it. It's like war and raw. Like waugh. <laughs> so thank you for that friends. Thank you for giving me a little pronunciation lesson on that one. Um, really loving this. I only made it 10 more pages since the last time I updated you all because it is so dense and very difficult to follow. So I haven't been making progress on this because with the current state of my brain working at such a low and slow capacity right now, this has been um, something that it, it's starting to feel a little like dread reading it but I'm loving it so much. So I know that when my brain capacity kind of goes back to normal, I will fall back into reading this and loving it. But for right now it is on the back burner. Then my partner and I are still reading Tin Man by Sarah Woodman together. We read it one more time together just a few days ago and got to page 61, uh, which is surprisingly very close to the end. This is a very short book. Um, I didn't talk much about this one, but it is about a man named Ellis 
and his tumultuous childhood um, and his relationship with his friend, Michael. They start out being friends as young boys and then it grows into something else. And at this point, Ellis's wife has passed away now that he's older. There's just a lot of reflection on Ellis's past and childhood and his relationship with Michael. So that's where we're at in this one. Really loving the writing style. I'm really enjoying it. The other book that I started, and I started this one just uh, maybe like two days ago because I knew I needed something really fun that would really keep my attention, keep me engrossed, and because of my brain span and my um, my attention span is so small right now. I just lose thoughts so fast. I lose interest really fast. So I picked up Vita Nostra by Marina and Sergei Diachenko. This is translated from Russian by Julia Matov Hersey. Uh, this is so much fun. This is keeping my interest. I am loving it. It is like Catherine House meets like Job of the Wasp meets secret history. Um, really loving it. It is about a young girl named Sasha who goes on vacation with her mom. Her mom is a single mother and they go on vacation and Sasha, our main character, is being followed by this man and she is horrified and then he tells her to start doing these very specific things that she has to do at very specific times otherwise something bad's gonna happen. So she begins to do them and once she completes the task, she goes and throws up and there are these gold coins in her barf. Like she's like throwing up gold coins and she's told to collect the coins and um, this kind of continues until the man basically says, okay, you're good. You can go ahead and enter into this university called like the Technological Institute of something. Um, so she goes to university there and it's filled with a bunch of kids who have no idea why they're there They have no idea what they're even studying and it's very confusing what they're studying It makes no sense, but it's all about like retraining the brain um, To see and interpret the world in a different way. It's eerie. It's bizarre It's so fun to read very accessible reading um, but it still feels exactly like my my cup of tea and my taste with like metaphysical stuff, um, conversations of things that are just bigger than humanity. That's just what, what I really love in literature is like when it starts talking about death, mortality, morality, physics, math, like it, it's there's something bigger, almost like Illuminati-esque. I don't know a better way to describe it, but loving this. So my goal with this reading vlog is to finish at least one of these books. <laughs> Most likely it's going to be Vita Nostra. Um, another goal, since you all are propped up against it, is to go through my books that I have read. That's the shelf you're on right now is my bookshelf of books that I've read. Go through again, maybe unhaul a few things that I no longer need or want and reorganize them a little bit. I just finished my November December wrap up so I have all of those books in front of me here. So I want to go through them, put them into piles of things if I want to donate them and just kind of just kind of go through everything again. So I'm going to do that right now before settling in for the rest of the day and reading Vita Nostra, maybe when my partner gets home having some dinner. I really need to eat. The lack of appetite and the nausea I have with this sickness too is really bad. Um, read Vita Nostra, relax, maybe watch a movie or something, but I, I hope that I find coziness. My goal with this channel is to provide you all with coziness, and it's also a way for me to find coziness and romanticize my own life. That's why I love making videos so much. This vlog, I want you to feel that as well, but I know I need to provide that for myself. So I hope in doing so, you all can feel it too. Taking care of ourselves, reading, finding comfort and just being completely homebound because I can't leave um, and reading really wonderful literature and being surrounded by books. So I'm going to take you all along with me, pivot the setup real quick and go through the books that I have, see what we want to keep, what we want to get rid of. So I will check in with you all a little bit later. Thank you all so much for being here. Let's move around some books. Anyone else find reorganizing bookshelves just so appetizing? Because I do. It's beautiful. Okay. Okay, these are my current shelves. These are all books that I've read here, up to here. 
down here is just a mess. Um, these are some classic pieces that I don't have on my other bookshelf because they kind of daunt me, but they're books that I want to keep for sure. I want to read at some point. This is kind of like the shelf of nonfiction, um, poetry, self-help, um, some books that I've collected that I, I really like. Oh no, my little sphinx. Put that right there for now. Um, yeah, it's just, it's, it's very cluttered. I really don't like this book stacking situation right now. Like it just, they're too uniform for me. Like they fit well because they're going all the way up to the ceiling but i don't know like i just don't like the square format of these shelves anymore um the square format is really bothersome to me now because they actually just are not very functional for bookshelves i feel like i'm gonna have to start doing like double rows and then it's a completely open back like that's my wall which i don't like either so i'm learning more as i'm becoming more and more invested in keeping books and all that stuff. I also still have Christmas decor out that I want to put away. So I'm going to go through these books, separate them into keeping and getting rid of, and yeah. Alphabetical order fits perfectly, all vertical. <laughs> so, uh, start with A and end with W. So, I'm gonna put knickknacks back on and then put the remainder of these books in places that make more sense.
friends. I really wish I could say I'm feeling better this morning, but I'm not. The sickness is lasting a very long time, but last night I laid in bed for like over three hours and I got halfway through Vita Nostra. I read so much. Look at that. This is a big book. It's like slightly over 400 pages and I'm now halfway. I'm so proud of myself. I actually like laid down and only read, which is amazing for my brain capacity right now. Like I, I did it. I can't express how much I'm loving this book, friends. Like it is so intriguing and confusing and bizarre and surreal and weird. Science fiction, surrealism, all the things like it is so my jam i can't believe it i love it in like an academic setting it's so good i'm really liking it so our main character sasha is now into her second year at this special technological institute and us as readers like we're really not even sure what is happening i wouldn't say it feels like it's a gatekeeping it's just that she is working with such advanced mind stuff <laughs> that I, there's no way that it could even be described I feel like because even Sasha is frustrated that no one else in her class or her grade or her friends like understands the concepts as well as she does. She just excels over everyone else. She is the smartest, strongest person in her class. Um, she constantly gets praises from her teachers and she has finally just hit a lesson that for her feels meaningless and stupid and she can't do it. So it's really interesting to see her feel like she's failing. She is just such a perfectionist. She puts her all into studies, but it has molded her mind so much to where now it feels like we're reading from the perspective of a robot. And it's wild to see how in these first 200 pages, how it opens up with her and her mom on this beach and she's just lounging around enjoying vacation and her brain is like a normal teenager's to where it is now and how the writing style has changed to showcase that is so well done that that's really masterful writing there because now it's like she looks at things but she doesn't think about them she observes the world around her but doesn't think about it She's just like, there's a candle on the table. Or she'll look up at the sky and be like, there are gray clouds, it will probably rain. Um, there are moments where she can see things that even aren't visually in front of her, but she knows they're there. It, it's very interesting, I don't really know how to explain it, but um, when she had first arrived at this university, her and her classmates were so freaked out by the upperclassmen because the upperclassmen would just be, they'd be walking down a hall and all of a sudden they'll just stop mid movement and not go any further or they'd be going up to a door and before going through the doorway like let's say it's this one like they would just touch the the door frame a few times and hold it before going through the door and it made Sasha and her classmates like so freaked out of like oh my gosh is that is that what's gonna happen to us um this is so eerie and creepy and then you start to understand the reason as to why that happens and it's starting to happen to Sasha. She is losing huge chunks of time where all of a sudden she'll be like in the middle of a sentence or in the middle of doing something and then boom, it's dark out and she's still in the same position. And it's it's so eerie and bizarre. It gives you kind of like the, the goosebumps and like the little hairs on your neck and arms are just like, oh, this is so creepy. Like what is happening to you? And the professors are all talking about kind of getting rid of her almost physical self and awareness of her physical body in order to keep training her brain to the status that they want it at where there's like no memory or feeling in a physical body it's so interesting no idea where it's going no idea what the main goal is for this university or anything so i'm gonna be curled up here because i feel awful this morning not feeling any better. Um, I'm gonna just curl up here. I'm gonna have some read with me videos on and just read more. My goal for today, my only goal for today is to finish reading this because I still need to be taking it really slow. On a personal note, I'm home alone again this morning because my partner's at work and I'm just like really craving pancakes or waffles. 
but he he's the one who makes it fun fact he is the only one who really cooks in the house because I am so bad at cooking and baking um, and he's really good at it so I don't know do I attempt to make myself pancakes because I'm craving blueberry pancakes like no other today my friends I want maple syrup I want blueberries but in other other news I am loving I'm looking at my reorganized bookshelf right now I'm loving it it works so much better with the vision that I have of one day with all my books I just want to showcase the eclecticness they all have varying spines it's all just alphabetical order the colors are all over the place and it looks so much cleaner and more open and I'm just admiring it right now like so much I, I really love how it turned out so that ended up exuding so much of my energy yesterday I felt so awful after doing that. I didn't think that something as simple as like just putting books on a shelf or off a shelf would be that taxing on me, but that's just how exhausted and lethargic this sickness has made me. Like just doing that really small task put me in bed for the rest of the day. Like I can't express like how exhausting this, this stupid thing is. I feel so tired after doing nothing. Like I, I've gotten up just to brew coffee and now I'm back in a bed because I, I really can't stand for very long so anyway those are my updates I'm gonna see if I can rustle up some like pancake mix and just try they might be really ugly pancakes but it just sounds really cozy loving Vita Nostra I really cannot wait to finish it and then to tell you all my thoughts so I just have about 200 more pages left which I can definitely do today so it's about like 9 a.m. right now so I still have an entire day of nothing but reading and that that feels really good so I'll check in with you all a little bit later apologize for the background noise. I have both a window open and a space heater running at the same time because the dryness and the feverness. And Umi's here with us. He's being very snuggly and lovey. Again, another morning where I wish I felt more normal, um, but I can't express the lethargicness, the lethargy. Like as soon as I wake up, I just feel like I immediately have to crawl back into bed. Yeah, I just feel so depleted of energy. But yesterday I was so close to finishing Vita Nostra, but I did fall asleep. But I only have 
40 pages left. I'm on page 359. I'm kind of hitting, well yesterday I was hitting a little bit of a wall with this book. It's still really enjoyable to read, but it's just so dense that it's hard. It's not hard to get soaked up into. I just don't know how to describe the feeling. Maybe it's because I'm also fevery. This feels so much like a fever dream. It just gets weirder and weirder and weirder and starts delving into a little bit of like fantasy, which I really like. It's more of like kind of like magical realism. Um, it's not like whole fantasy yet. Um, but then I realized also that this is a series. No, I'm not a series reader. So like things might not wrap up and I need to look into the other books, see, see how many books are in this series. Cause I don't know if I have the brain capacity to read any more about them. I'm still really enjoying it. I just can't really quite explain like what it's making me feel lately. It just feels really heavy and very dense and dark, which I usually really love, but um, I actually picked up this book in lieu of Brideshead Revisited, the classic, because I thought, this would be a little bit more dialogue and plot driven, but it is so introspective, so surreal, so bizarre, um, which I, again, I love. Those are the genres and tropes I love in reading and in books, but it's also like just so dense with information. So like this text is quite small as well. So each page while I was like filming myself yesterday, each page takes me two minutes to read because it's so much information. You also have a ton of characters and they all have Russian names, which also means that they have a second Russian name. They have like their nickname. Sometimes they're called their nickname or their full first name or just their last name. So you really have to like kind of keep track. I've been doing a really good job of like knowing who's who, so that's not really been a problem. It takes a second to like visualize who is this person um, with their Russian name. So I don't know, it just feels really heavy and dense, but I do only have 40 pages. It is like 9.30, I think in the morning on Monday. So I'm gonna curl up here in bed this morning. Oh no, am I losing my voice again? And finish this, finish this bad boy. And then tell you all my thoughts and then I, I'm not sure what I'm gonna read next, honestly. I might start uh, another book, like a smaller, shorter book, but I think all the books on my, oh my God, what are you doing? Mm. You are precious, you're so precious. Oh, look at this, what are you doing? What are you doing? I hope you're enjoying this vlog, friends. Being cozy, reading a lot. Hope you're doing well, and I'll check in with you all a little bit later. I'm gonna make breakfast skillet and talk to you all about what the frick I just read. <laughs> oh my god. Maybe I need to move you guys down so I could chop some vegetables. Okay, I'm cutting some potatoes. Hopefully it's not too noisy and annoying, but dude, what is this book? <laughs> this book is like huge big brain energy. Um Oh, I feel really sick just standing up. Oh God, maybe I need to pull up a chair. I think I need to pull up a chair. I feel like I'm gonna faint. <laughs> oh, I feel awful. What the fuck? Oh, this is not the best angle to cut things either. So this book is like huge big brain energy. And since, you know, I was in high school or university, I feel like I don't really analyze books or read through a critical lens as much as I did in university and in school. I feel like I was just so much smarter then, um, which I know is probably a common feeling. 
but wow this book made me feel so stupid i did look up meanings of the ending afterwards because i was so like what just happened like i feel like i can't even think for myself right now um so i rarely ever talk about spoilers on my channel but i'm gonna put a spoiler disclaimer on the bottom here because i want to talk about it real quick um and if anyone else has read it i would just really love to talk about it more so basically sasha our main character and basically everyone at this university is a word they represent a word they lose their human form and they turn into like non-existent forms of being and the whole process of them at this university is to learn how to separate themselves from their human physical form um, but it's done in like such a convoluted, very intellectual way with all these like graphs and forms and visualizations and it's very confusing to read. It's also a long and dense book um, going through these exercises and weird things happen. Very weird things happen. But at the very end of this book, while Sasha is in her final exam that will lead her to a uh, different university and then on to graduate school um, to further master her word, which she is a verb. That's what everyone's been telling her. We find out that she's actually a password that can open up a new world. Her herself, like not as a human anymore. Like she's no longer human. She's a password. And from what I gathered online, and I would not have pieced together myself at all, is that one of her professors, Farit Kozaneskov, he is basically the devil um, or death. He must have known that Sasha, our main character, is bigger than a verb. And he has been trying to give her like an out, a way to not realize her full potential because he lives in a world of fear. He controls people by fear. And she's always fought that. And she has always argued with him saying like, why can't you just give me like positive reinforcement? There is, you know, people can learn from love and not just fear. And he went on this big speech about how like, there cannot be love without fear and all these like very meta big, um, topics and it was just so fascinating and interesting um, but then at the very end of the book you realize that Sasha really is omnipotent like she says that at one point in the book that she's omnipotent and her professors are like you can't go around saying that like you are still human you're not omnipotent and it turns out like she is omnipotent she's able to create these worlds so at the very end it's kind of alluding to the fact that she can create this world without fear in it because this whole time she has been so played by these professors into doing what they want her to do because they have threatened the life of her mother they've threatened the life of her baby brother um through fear for her to do the things. So now it kind of alludes to the fact that she's gonna create this world where there is no fear, it's only love. Um, and at the, at the very end of the book, I started noticing these very biblical kind of word choices and um, references and alluding to the Bible and creation, but it's in this like very, bizarre way where it honestly could just be about like mortality and morality control human elements like love and death they're just so human it's just fascinating fascinating friends like i've never read a this big of a book this huge chunk of a story and it to have that much meaning i feel like i found so many books um that are maybe like really short and tiny that pack this kind of punch, but never one this big. I feel like that's a risk of the authors. Like writing, I mean, it is only like 400 pages, but with how dense it is and how much plot is covered and how many years are covered in this book, it feels like an 800 page book, I swear to God. Like it's a lot and you could so easily have all the meanings that you wanted to put in there as an artist, as a writer, could just be completely muddled by how much 
plot and time goes on in this book but that very end was insane it was so bizarre it lost a lot of its normal rhythm and it turned really fragmented and it got very abstract and surreal very big brain energy you have to be able to like dissect the meaning between the lines for that i'm very grateful for this book for making me actually think and question and wonder. That's what I want to experience when I'm reading a book. I want to question my norm, my status quo, where my brain level is currently at and be like, why am I not thinking hard enough? Like, why does this not make sense to me? I want to understand why it doesn't make sense. And it is that critical brain, that critical theory. Um, so overall, I feel a little brain fucked by this book. I'm like, Whoa. I feel like there are so many more things that I just don't understand. Um, near the end there, I did start annotating the book and actually underlining things. And one of the things that stood out the most, I think, to me is that um, probably halfway through the book, there's one of the professors is saying, like, it doesn't matter if you, you don't have to understand the concepts we're teaching you. Oh God, what was it? It was like another word for understand, but it's different. Understanding is being able to deconstruct a concept and understand and figure out how to put it back together and the function of it. Whereas this other word, why am I blanking? It's the fever brain, I just can't remember anything. Oh, the brain fog. But basically there's like another word that's like, you just know. There's a difference between understanding and knowing and knowing is in within the core, it's more intuitive. It's, um, you just immediately can learn and know something. And something that just like, it can't be wrong. And it doesn't need to be deconstructed because you already know, which in my mind sometimes feels like morals. Like we morally know what is right and wrong. And it's not necessarily something you have to understand. It's just something you know, um, which I find really interesting. Just incredible. So uh, yeah, wow, that book was wild. I do recommend it. I guess I didn't really say that. I do recommend this book, but you have to know what you're going into. It's not a stereotypical dark academia, plot, dialogue, character-based book. Um, it's so bizarre. <laughs> and uh, somebody said it's like Kafka meets Harry Potter. And that's true, but I would definitely say that the Harry Potter element is like really pushed under there. Like way more Kafka, Catherine House, or Kafka, The Job of the Wasp by Colin Wynette. Like just ambiguity, surrealism, you can't, like nothing is just given to you in this book. It really messed with my brain. My brain feels really fuzzy right now, like very staticky. Uh, so if that sounds like your kind of book, then frick yeah, read it. But what? <laughs> what? It just, I don't know. It's gonna take me a while, I think, to figure it out. So <sighs> anyway, okay, time to cook. <laughs> picking a book for me because I feel like I'm gonna hit a reading slump after Vita Nostra. Right, Omi? Uh, what shelves? Any of them besides yours. Okay. I'm hoping for something not super dense or difficult. Oh, cool. about it too. He's making biscuits. Thank you.
Good morning, friends. I'm starting to see a glimmer of hope through the sickness. I don't feel absolutely exhausted this morning, which is amazing. I am feeling a little bit more awake. Not 100% at all, like not close, but I'm feeling not as like waking up and feeling totally exhausted. So that's great. After I finished Vita Nostra and made myself breakfast yesterday, I filmed a new YouTube video. So that will be coming soon. Woo, the brain fog is still really bad. I'm losing track of my words so fast. There are so many empty pauses while I'm talking right now. <laughs> Editing August is probably like, oh my god, just spit it out. I also binge watched um, Archive 81. I got six episodes through yesterday, which is basically like six hours. <laughs> so that's how I spent my time. That's how I spent my evening. And then Alec picked out a book for me because I started feeling like Vita Nostra might put me in a reading slump because it was so dense and heavy and there were so many hidden undertones of different things that I was like really nervous to pick up another book because it just felt really draining. That whole Vita Nostra experience was so draining, way more draining than I anticipated. And thankfully he picked up Cheese Sweet Home Volume 1 by Konami Kanata. This is an adorable graphic novel, all in color and I read it in like an hour because uh, it's just this cute little cat who goes missing from his mom. He wanders away from his mom and this tiny little kitten and then he meets this little boy and the boy takes him in and his parents are trying to find the cat home because they don't allow cats in the apartment. Um, and it's all just these like tiny little baby sagas of this little kitten trying to learn how to be in a home with people. The family decides to take the cat in, they name it Chi, and um, they're not allowed to have cats in the apartment though, so there's like all this like, Chi be quiet, Chi don't go in the window, like it's just so wholesome and cute. I was like laughing out loud at some of these illustrations, let me see if I can find one, like it's just so wholesome. When she discovers shoelaces, look at the pupil dilation and then the attack face! It's so cute and wholesome and now that I have cats, um, I was never really a cat person but now I'm just, I'm all about the cat literature and the cat books so this was great. This is a great way to just like end my night, just read this really fast because it's like hardly any dialogue. Um, it is translated by Ed Chavez so yes, there, that is what I read last night, very cute. So today, today is my last day of um, being able to be this relaxed with nothing to do because tomorrow I'm gonna try to do my part-time job tomorrow. I tried to do a half day last Friday um, and it did not go well. Like I was like crying. Thankfully the job is remote but like I was crying because it just felt so difficult. The brain fog um, and the lethargy are just so intense that it made a job that I've been so comfortable doing. I've been working there for like three years now. Like it made it feel so hard and complicated and confusing, which is an experience I haven't had since I first started there. And even when I first started, I wasn't crying. Like it's just very overwhelming with the brain fog. It's just the weirdest sickness. I know I've said it many a times in this vlog, but it's just a very weird sickness. Um, last night, I definitely experienced a lot of nausea. I don't know why. I was just laying in bed and felt like I was spinning. It was just disgusting. So hopefully this is done soon. That would be great. Um, so this is my last full day of just like not having to work, not doing anything. Um, and I'm so glad I'm able to take that time for myself. Honestly, it's I'm very, very grateful. Um, so today I'm going to hop back into Brideshead Revisited, Evelyn Loire. Um, last time I read this, I got to page 58. And I'm just gonna kind of read this today and we'll see how far I get. I'm not planning on finishing this today, but just getting a little bit further would be awesome. It is easy to read, like I've, ex I've said. It's easy to read, but it's not fast to read. Uh, it still takes a little bit to read the sentences and then uh, actually understand and comprehend like what's actually what's actually freaking happening, you know? So that's why I'm rereading today. Um, I did have some wild dreams last night. It was my first night not taking a Benadryl to be able to sleep. Um, so I had some wild dreams. So I feel like I want to do some collaging 
or art journaling about my dreams. Um, just sounds really fun right now and really cozy, so I kind of do something for myself this morning of just creating journaling. Um, so I'm gonna do that, and then we'll see where I'm at. I might want to make some breakfast, and it's just gonna be another full day of hanging out here. I also might start editing this vlog so it can go up soon, and that's about it. Those are my plans for the day. Very grateful that I have the time to just rest and recuperate and uh, I haven't left the house in so long. I'm gonna go and just get started on my morning, see where the day takes me, and I'll check in with you all a little bit later. This will probably be my last check-in for this vlog. I just started chapter four of Bride's Head Revisited and I need to read aloud this passage here. It's just so beautiful. This writing style is so gorgeous. I, I'm just really loving this book so much. Our main character Charles is at Sebastian, his friend's estate over the summer um, and they are completely alone there. And it reads, the languor of youth, how unique and quintessential it is how quickly, how irrecoverably lost. The zest, the generous affections, the illusions, the despair, all the traditional attributes of youth, all save this, come and go with us through life. Again and again in riper years, we experience under a new stimulus, what we thought had been finally left behind. The authentic impulse to action, the renewal of power and its concentration on a new object, Again and again, a new truth is revealed to us in whose light all our previous knowledge must be rearranged. These things are a part of life itself, but languor, the relaxation of yet unwearied sinews, the mind sequestered and self-regarding, the sun standing still in the heavens and the earth throbbing to our own pulse, that belongs to youth alone and dies with it. Perhaps in the mansions of Limbo, the heroes enjoy some such compensation for their loss of the beatific vision. Perhaps the beatific vision itself has some remote kinship with this lowly experience. I, at any rate, believed myself very near heaven during those languid days at Bride's Head. Shut up! Shut up! It's beautiful. It's beautiful. So, I'm loving this. I would love to have it done by the time of next week's reading vlog, but you all will find out then, my friends. You'll find out then. I'm enjoying this. I'm loving it. It's beautiful. I'm excited to see where it goes. It's just a lot of pompous, ridiculous, decadent, rich, fun, very aristocratic and stuffy, but also beautiful and decadent. I just really like it. So. I'm excited to tell you all more about this, hopefully in my January wrap-up. If not, next week's reading vlog. Thank you all so much for spending time with me while I've been sick. Honestly, this has been the biggest help ever to be vlogging. Just getting me through very lonely days, completely isolated and quarantined at home. I did start editing this vlog earlier, so if you've made it to the end, because this is a long one, this is a long vlog. If you made it to the end, comment your favorite emoji. 
what's your favorite emoji if you don't have anything else to say if you made it to the end just put a string of your favorite emoji your favorite emojis whatever It'd be great i would love to know how many people made it to the end of this long vlog and if you like long vlogs where i talk way more in depth about books and stuff so thank you all so incredibly much for being here thank you for keeping me company while i've been sick i really hope you enjoyed it i hope you enjoyed the coziness i hope you feel inspired to pick up a book i really appreciate you all and i can't wait to see you all again very soon for my next video stay cozy my friends extra extra cozy bye